without limits family for joining me again this week we have a special presentation for you educating you regarding the COVID-19 and your diabetes so let's get to it what we know about COVID-19 you've heard it all over this is just a summary according to the world health organization the virus comes from a family of coronaviruses it's a novel strain discovered in 2019 transmitted between both animals and people the incubation period is 2 to 14 days after exposure what are some of the coronavirus symptoms Core symptoms may include, but not limited to, I want to add, respiratory problems such as a cough, nasal congestion, shortness of breath, pneumonia. Infected people may also experience fever, body aches, and sore throat. I want to also ask and let you know that each individual is different. The virus affects each person different. Some may have no symptoms and contracted the virus. Others may have complications from the symptoms and others may have a mild form. Diabetes. The World Health Organization warns that the most at risk population, such as older people and persons with pre existing medical conditions, such as hypertension, also known as high blood pressure, heart disease, lung disease, cancer, and diabetes, may develop more serious illness when they contract the virus. Diabetes does not increase the risk of new coronaviruses, but it can worsen the outcome of COVID-19. According to Gayan P. Fanadi, PhD, Associate Professor of Endocrinology of the University of Padua, Italy. People with diabetes can be assured they are not at higher risk for becoming infected, but they must pay attention to the symptoms and signs of disease progression. Research suggests that diabetes is one of the most common comorbidities among people infected with COVID-19. Type one diabetes, the immune system attacks the cells in the pancreas that makes insulin. Therefore, people with type one diabetes requires insulin every day. Type 2 diabetes, which is also common form of diabetes, the body doesn't make enough or it appropriately uses the insulin it has. As previously mentioned, diabetes can cause a greater complications that can result in death. So how can we stay safe from the coronavirus if you have diabetes? Here are a few things that we can do. First and foremost, know your numbers, your blood glucose numbers. Make sure you are in control, that your blood glucose levers are within normal range. Therefore, I highly recommend anyone who is a diabetic or taking care of someone with diabetes 
that they write down their numbers on a log on a daily basis. Many people keep them in their machines, but they don't write them down. It is important that you write them down and also that you share that information with your physician or healthcare provider because decisions can be made in terms of your management. Oftentimes when they're in the machine, many people don't go back and reflect or review what those numbers are. But if you have them written down, you can be able to see from a day to day, from week to week, from month to month, how you're running and you can provide that information to your physician. Your physician will not only look at that, but every three to four months, they'll order what's called a hemoglobin A1C. And those of you that are diabetes, that have, di uh, that have been diagnosed with diabetes, know what that means. It looks at how your body affects the blood glucose over a period of time and where your, diabetic, your diabetes is being managed. Another one is practice a healthy diet. Next one is to make sure, and this is very important during this social distancing and we're asking everyone to stay at home. It is very important that you have enough medications and supplies as well as food at home to manage your diabetes and manage your blood glucose levels. So either you can have things brought to you. There's different pharmacies that will do delivery and mail order now, or you can have loved ones go and pick up groceries for you and have your supplies. But it's very, very important that you have the necessary things that you need to not only manage your blood sugar levels, but to also make sure you have the things in your home to manage your daily living, such as your food and making sure you have enough nutrition and adequate water and all these different things that will keep you in the home and, and away from potential risks by being about. Practicing social distancing, it kind of goes hand in hand in what I've said already, that we want to make sure you're staying home, free from people that could potentially be at risk that you don't even know that's at risk. Practice good hand hygiene. 20 sec seconds of hand washing or using hand sanitizer. However, if your hands are visibly soiled, hand sanitizer should not be used. Schedule a virtual appointment with your primary care physician or your healthcare provider. Many doctor's offices have shut down doing face-to-face -face appointments, but they've opened up doing video appointments which they call virtual appointments or doing telephone conferences to check in with their patients, particularly patients that have pre-existing conditions such as diabetes. So make sure you schedule an appointment during this time and have your questions ready and prepared for that teleconference or that video conference that you will have. And we have a couple of things to have for you to prepare you for that later on in this presentation. And I wanna to mention to those that may not already have a healthcare provider, that there's public health organizations within your community that if you reach out to them, that they could also be able to assist you to make sure you can see a healthcare provider during this time. Create an emergency call list. People that in the event something happened to you, that it's easy and accessible to reach so that they can bring help or be informed of what's going on. Many of our seniors are still very independent. They live alone. So it's very, very important that you have a list readily available. I strongly recommend putting those lists over the refrigerator so that it's easy and accessible to anybody that comes into the home. Make sure you create a medication list. And with creating that, take your medication as prescribed. Oftentimes, I find that many patients will have medications prescribed to them, but they won't take them. And they won't take them because maybe they're experiencing some side effects or some discomfort from the medications. And instead of communicating to their healthcare provider, 
they stop taking the medication. I want you to do the opposite. If you're having an issue with taking a medication, particularly with your diabetes, I know that metformin oftentimes creates irritability for people in their stomach or they feel like they have the runs or different things and they'll say, I'm just not going to take it. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to talk to your healthcare provider, explain the side effects you're experiencing from the medication. And that way you and the health care provider can set up a plan on whether your medicine can be reduced in its strength or whether they can change it altogether. But it's very important that you don't just stop taking it and then create another at-risk situation. Continue to have physical activity, even during your social distancing. There's things that you can do in the home through exercises even if you have limited mobility or have medical conditions, but you can still be active in the home. And I did a YouTube video on our podcast that talked about getting fit and healthy. And in that a trainer, Trainer John explained to us, there's several exercises that you can do right in your home to keep you fit. I highly recommend for those of you that may have not seen it or new people coming to the channel to go back and take a look at that. I've also included for you a CDC reference where you can go online to the CDC and use this. You can print it to have it in your home or you can save it onto your computer, but it's a helpful tip actually reiterating some of the things that we already spoke about, but this way you can have something right in your immediate environment if you want to print it and post it within your home. Planning, you've heard me talk many times about it's important to have a plan. Even planning with your diabetes as in this potential risk of the coronavirus. So gathering your supplies. So we've listed a list of things that you should have in your home to help you be safe as you plan to ride out this storm that we're in right now as it relates to the coronavirus. So a few of them I'm gonna to mention to you and feel free to print this and make a copy of this on your own, and it's uh, telephone numbers to your doctor's healthcare team, your pharmacy, and your insurance provider. I already mentioned about making a list of your medication and dosage. Include your vitamins and supplements. Make sure you have simple carbs, such as soda, honey, jam, jelly, hard candy, popsicles, for if you are at risk for your blood sugar becoming low. You want to have something there that can immediately boost your blood sugar up should you need to have that done. Many states have already declared it as a state, uh, uh, an emergency, um, state of an emergency. So make sure if you're already in one of those states that's declared, or if it's a potential that you have extra medication and prescriptions on hand so that you don't have to leave the home. And as I mentioned before, a lot of pharmacies are doing mail order delivery. Take advantage of that. Also, if you're not aware, the American Diabetic Association may have resources to assist people that may be struggling to pay for insulin. They don't have money. So, Go on to their site and see if you're eligible for some of those resources and benefits to cover the cost of your medication. Extra supplies, alcohol rub, soap and water for your hands, ketone strips, glucagon in case you run high or you run low. And we already said, make sure you have enough um, groceries in the home to prepare for your home, period. Here is the plan to talk to your healthcare provider. You heard me tell you earlier today, it's important that you try to schedule an appointment. And I have given you some information to help you to be ready when you talk to your healthcare provider. So that way the time is valuable. 
You have some cheat sheet information, such as how often you're checking your blood sugars, medications you should use in the event you have a cold or a flu, any changes to your diabetic medications if you're sick or if you're having symptoms with taking the ones, like I said, side effects, complications from your current medications. So these are information that you want to ask your doctor, along with others that you might have. But you want to make sure you get a health check, whether it's a virtual health check, where there's a video chat and online, or a telephone health check. It's so important that you stay connected. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Again, some helpful tips as we're combating this coronavirus. We want to keep all our people healthy. And we already know that diabetes, among other pre-existing conditions, can have a great impact on how this disease affects you as well as mortality. So remember, family, love yourselves, take care of yourselves, because guess what? you're worth it. I thank you for joining me again this week, and I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Thank you, and happy Resurrection Day on tomorrow. Thanks for joining us here at Living Your Life Without Limits with your host, Shannon Jackson. You always know she always brings you quality content all the time with each and every episode she creates. And that is just for you. You know, Shannon has done her part. Now's the time for you to do yours. You need to take action. Show her your love. Click on that subscribe button and get your content every single week. Quality content you can find nowhere else. Want more content on the go? No problem. Go to our website at livingyourlifewithoutlimits.com. We're also on the social media sites like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, LinkedIn, iTunes, and Spotify. Thanks again for joining us today. Tune in next time for another episode of Living Your Life Without Limits and subscribe today.